Right, as a viewer's request, I'll uh, do an update on the Golden Lotus Banana or Musella Leprocarpa. Um, so we brought, I bought one early on in the year as a tiny little plug plant online. I did do a video on that, which I put in the ground. And this is that. Um, put on some size, but struggled with the dry and we did get the spider mites on it. So we can see there's uh, spider mite damage on the leaf there, along with the uh, collocations as well. But uh, let's put on some good size. So that, that was a, a, a small plug plant bought online. I think I paid about 10 quid for it. And that's put on a fair decent bit of growth that is literally probably only about eight inches tall so that's done well in the ground I did a month or so later buy a cheap pot from B&M I did do a video on that as well I think it was about six pound fifty and it had three in a pot so this is what they look like now I left them for a month because I said I weren't going to split them changed my mind thought let's just go for it and uh, two have done well one not so well surprisingly the biggest one is one that uh, not done so well I've actually cut a lot of the leaves off because they start to brown obviously when I divided these I cut most of the leaves off just do the root disturbance and you know the, the pressures on the plant to keep the leaves alive they die anyway so we cut them off and like I say interestingly the two smaller ones which I thought might struggle have done better than the big one now, I'm not saying it's dead but that did start pushing out a new leaf but it's already started to brown off so I don't know I don't hold high hopes for that particular plant but the other two have both kicked out two new leaves plus a third coming so that they, they, they are growing obviously this time of year everything's going to slow down a bit so what am I going to do over winter with these the one in the ground I'm going to leave in the ground as I've got a couple of backups now in pots and this has got a, I won't say a huge pseudo stem on it, but it might just be enough to get it through winter. I, I am going to protect it, probably in a way of, I've got some big plastic cloches, so I might just cut the leaves off, um, stuff the cloche with dried leaves and uh, pin it over the pseudo stem. Allegedly these are fairly hardy, but I know that the, the issue is bringing them, you know, they need a fair bit of heat to get them going again. <clears throat> so the idea is to keep it a little bit dry and just keep it frost free. So I think the the cloche filled with leaves will achieve that. It'll help to keep the pseudo stem frost free and a little bit drier and obviously insulation from the dried leaves. So that's the theory behind that. And then when uh, spring does come along, we'll simply lift the cloche, take the leaves out, and then put the cloche back on to give it that extra bit of heat to get it going, if it survives. I've never actually tried one outside. I know a lot of people do, and they come back, so that's gonna be a new one for me, a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how it goes. These two, well, two stroke three, we will, I'm probably going to keep these in my summer house, frost free. And it does warm up a little bit, you know, even in winter. So it's like a bit, bit of a greenhouse in there, it's facing south, so it gets the full sun, full winter sun. So it does warm up during the day, but it, it does cool down considerably at night. And I will be running a, a small fan heater in there just to keep it above freezing probably around 
three or four degrees. So these will go into dormancy at that temperature and light level. So as the leaves die off, I'm not gonna cut the leaves off straight away. As they die, I, I, I just believe that any plant, if you leave the leaves on and they die back on their own, a little bit of nutrient is gonna go back into the, the pseudo stem and roots rather than just cut the leaves off and you know try and get a little bit of uh, juice back into the plant as much as you can so we'll let them die off naturally then cut them off and they will probably look like a state of this one and these aren't huge so whether they will survive the winter I don't know but we've got you know two chances in ground protected and kept frost free so that'll probably be the last video we do on these this year and we'll see what happens well we'll, we'll probably keep an eye over them over winter probably do some update videos of stuff in the, the summer house as well because there'll be a lot, lot of stuff getting chucked in there and yeah we'll just uh, keep an eye on them and see what happens obviously we'll be keeping these pretty dry they're quite damp at the moment due, due to the fact that we've had a, a reasonable amount of rain over the last few days but um, I know tomorrow is meant to be quite cool so we sort of dropped down into we've been in the 20s for months and months you know 20 degrees plus and now it's, it's probably about 17 today and tomorrow could only be about 15 and I know the nighttime temperatures are definitely getting into single, single figures as well so yeah autumn is on its way I know we're gonna have a little bit of a, a bounce back the week after next but we'll see the weather changes from day to day we all know that so there's the update on on your lotus golden lotus bananas so I did buy one from B&M last year as well and I actually paid more that was cheaper this year last year I paid £10 and this year it's only £6.50 so I'm thinking they're not the best quality at that sort of price but they've been pumping out a few leaves we managed to separate them and keep them alive to an extent right let's leave it at that thanks for watching